Um, meantime, we are joined now on the phone by Egypt's finance minister, Samir Radwan. He was appointed by Egypt's president, Hosni Mubarak, to this position just yesterday. Uh, Samir, thank you very much for calling into In Business. Uh, I want to get your sense. You made one of the very first decisions in your office uh, to uh, defer taxes on food imports. Are you concerned about a food storage shortage at this point? No, certainly it's, it's quite normal. I, as you know, Egypt is a net importer of food. And uh, so naturally one of my main concerns is not to starve the market uh, from uh, food imports uh, for no necessary reason, given the circumstances. So I have taken a decision to release uh, food imports that are and basic basic commodities that are coming from abroad, uh, without insisting that the importer uh, pays the customs duty immediately. It is sufficient that he or she writes uh, an undertaking uh, that uh, they will uh, that they will pay the customs duties. So that is uh, that, that's very important for a for a country like Egypt. Uh, will Egypt be going and, and buying more wheat and more commodities on the open market to keep up with the, with the subsidies that you currently offer the Egyptian public? Uh, well, I mean, Egypt is already importing uh, 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 about 60 percent of its needs of wheat from, uh, from abroad, and I don't think we are going to exceed that. What we wanted to ensure is that the market has a sufficient supply at the moment mm -hmm. for its requirement of food. Uh, it's the end of the month there in Egypt. Uh, business has been shut down. The internet banks have been closed. How are people getting yeah. paid today? I mean, it would seem to be quite a cash-starved crowd you're seeing in the street. Yes. Well, I mean, that, is, uh, that has been a main concern uh, until today. The uh, governor of the central bank uh, is uh, fully aware of the problem, and uh, we are finding means and ways of paying, first of all, the pensioners, because these are the first line, really, that to be, to be hit, they are very vulnerable, uh, and we have devised with the governor uh, a number of ways of getting their pensions to them as soon as possible. Secondly, uh, How, how bank, soon would that be? Uh, like tomorrow, and uh, for the for the banks, uh, I think uh, on Thursday the banks will reopen. Probably not 100 percent of the uh, branches, uh, but uh, quite a, lot, a sufficient number. Uh, and uh, for sure on Sunday uh, they will be reopened. So pensioners can expect to receive cash from the state tomorrow. Banks will be open by Thursday. When will your uh, stock or, market or be open? Sunday, or Sunday. Pardon me. The stock market? Yes. Hello? Yes. The stock market, we are monitoring. Uh, the the, the, the uh, chairman of the stock uh, exchange is watching the situation very carefully. And you see, basically, all these things, we want to avoid a collapse of, of the financial uh, economy. Uh, like what happened during the uh, financial uh, the financial crisis or in situations of crises as we saw in Iraq or Afghanistan or Argentina we want to avoid that uh, so they will be uh, they will not be a let me put it this way they will not be a minute late uh, than necessary uh, that, once law that would and suggest order you're is you're pretty close to that breaking point then sir uh, no, I I don't think I don't think so. I don't think so at all. We are not uh, close to the uh, to the tipping uh, the tipping point, as it were. Uh, we 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 are not close to that, and we are hoping that things are uh, get back to normal once there is a political settlement of of the demonstrations. All right. Well, we've seen major conglomerates, Coke, General Motors, other big multinationals either pull back or pull out of Egypt because of what's happening on the streets. I know you spoke to our reporter just a few days ago in Cairo, Lara Satrakian, before you were named to this position. And at that time, yeah. you told her you were very concerned about investors not returning to Egypt. No, 
uh, I said I am very concerned about investors being afraid of coming to Egypt because before this crisis, there was a very strong appetite, both in the, among Arab investors and foreign investors, uh, to come to Egypt. And uh, what, I, what I said is that I am afraid that this event may deter. Uh, you know, we were in the process of regaining the excellent performance of FDI attraction to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, which was $13 billion uh, a couple of years ago, just before the, the economic crisis, the mm -hmm. financial crisis. Uh, and we were inching our way to, to regaining uh, that, that level. I think we were expecting $10 billion this year. But, but uh, by the close of 2010, uh, but I think with this event, uh, we uh, will not get that uh, amount, and that's what I was telling you. Uh, sir, 40 percent of the population of Egypt is said to subsist on, what, $2 a day. How are you going to create jobs with the high level of unemployment? What's the plan? Is there one? Yes, of course there is one. <laughs> of course there is one. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal to, to create uh, jobs for 650,000 uh, Egyptians who come to the labor market every year. Uh, first of all, we have to regain the high growth rate uh, that Egypt achieved before the financial and the economic crisis of 7 to 8 percent, and that's possible. That's quite possible. But of course, with the present stalemate, uh, that is making achieving this objective a bit difficult. Do you intend to ask the U.S. for aid specifically to help create those jobs, specifically to help Egypt reopen for business and get back on its feet? We would rather resort to domestic investment in the first place and uh, for uh, help from abroad, we prefer trade and investment and not aid. Tourism uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, creates a tremendous amount of cash for, for the Egyptian economy. It's like $12 billion a year, right? I mean, this kind of yeah. global image that's being broadcast right now of unrest, of tanks in the streets, is going to keep people from getting on those planes. How are you going to make up that cash difference? Well, once, once you see the situation uh, comes back to normal, the fundamentals uh, in Egypt are quite, quite sound, and they will work in, uh, in the economy's favor. It is the largest market in the region. It's not the richest, but the largest uh, market uh, in, the, in the region. But you're going to uh, lose is, further uh, jobs in that, in that sector. Is the government going to create more positions? Where's the job growth coming from? The, the job growth will be coming uh, from a national employment scheme, a national employment scheme program uh, that uh, can create jobs where the state puts the seed money, attracts the, uh, the private sector in a PPP, public-private partnership mod mode, uh, to rebuild the, the, the economy and uh, provide the incentives to the economy. Minister, I, I believe it's foreign investors have, you know, upwards of $40 billion of exposure to, to Egypt. You said the banks are going to reopen between Thursday and Sunday. What are you yes. expecting to happen during that time? I mean, you've got to be getting calls from all around the world right now from foreign banks asking yes. about the capital they've got there. Yes, uh, we, 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 we want to have as normal a situation as possible because confidence of those investors in the Egyptian economy is extremely important for us. All right. Um, Minister, thank you so much.